If you're into fast and fluid legato lines, you definitely clicked on the right video today. Because I'm willing to bet that you're making one or two fretting hand technique mistakes at the moment that actually prevent you from playing and sounding like this. How can I be so sure of that? I was simply making them as well before I really got into this playing style. So let's not waste any more time and check out the biggest fretting hand technique or legato technique mistake that might be holding you back right now. I think you're gonna be quite surprised because it's not what you're probably expecting. So in case you're just starting out with this, you're essentially combining hammer-ons with pull-offs, of course. So with both examples I was just picking each string once and the fingers of my fretting hand were doing the rest. So for the hammer-ons you're just hammering on, as the name suggests. So you're generating a note by hammering your finger against the fretboard. That's relatively easy to master and to speed up with an exercise like this. But here's already one very common beginner mistake. For the pull-offs you're not just lifting your fingers from the fretboard like this, hoping to generate a sound while doing that. As you can hear that results in a barely audible note. You actually want to perform a small snapping motion with your fingers to really make the string ring out. An exercise like this is actually really good to develop that snapping motion with all of your fingers. And one more fundamental exercise you need to master before you tackle the more advanced topics in this video. So this is one of the first very simple two string lines or exercises that really helped me out in the beginning because it combines hammer-ons and pull-offs and it also starts to sound a bit more practical and cool than just playing a scale up or down. You might have actually discovered the biggest technique mistake when it comes to legato in this introduction segment. When we are practicing this we are mostly focused on our index finger, middle finger, ring finger and pinky finger and we're basically completely forgetting about the most important technique factor when it comes to legato, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Remember the bet I mentioned earlier? Because I'm willing to bet that you're making one or two fretting hand technique mistakes at the moment. So I'm essentially betting that the following exercises and explanations will greatly increase your legato technique in just a couple of minutes. If I actually win this bet, make sure to subscribe to the channel because around 80% of you guys and girls that are watching these videos are not subscribed yet. And aside from really hurting my feelings, you also constantly keep missing very helpful exercises and technique tips. So are you ready? Because then I have to turn around. So you might already know that thumb position plays a huge role with finger technique, meaning where your thumb is positioned in relation to your fingers that are hitting the fretboard. If you're familiar with my playing, you know that I get the best results when I position my thumb in the area behind my middle finger, just like this. So that kind of grip gives me the best support for my fingers and that's especially helpful when it comes to legato. <laughs> And if you paid close attention right now to my thumb while I was playing, you already witnessed my absolute biggest technique revelation when it comes to legato. So as we're looking at this slowed down footage, you can clearly see that my thumb is moving along with my fingers when I'm switching between the different strings. To make this clearly visible for you, I marked the starting point on the low E string and the position of my thumb as soon as I reach the high E string. So it's not locked into the same position when I'm playing complex scale phrases like that. I want to make sure to move it along with my fingers as I'm playing. Reason number one is consistency. Because I get the same feeling and the same technique on the lower strings and on the higher strings, I don't have to change my wrist angle or my finger position or anything like that. So it almost feels exactly the same when I'm playing on the lower strings or on the higher strings. So even just slightly moving along like this immediately feels much better than just staying right here and locking the thumb in this position. As you can hear that doesn't sound as clean anymore and I also really feel it in my shoulder because I have to move my hand like this. I always felt like I couldn't really nail legato licks on the higher strings at the beginning. I felt much more comfortable on the lower strings and this instantly fixed my problem. And the second reason why this is so awesome concerns your grip and your tension with your fretting hand in general. Because in order to get the best, most clean and efficient results with legato you have to stay very relaxed with your fretting hand. <laughs> And when you're moving your thumb along with your fingers like this, you actually can't really grip the neck because as soon as the grip is too tight, you can't move your thumb anymore. So this playing style is so awesome because it really forces you to stay relaxed with your fretting hand and to play with a light grip. And as soon as you master this for legato, you can also apply it to any other technique like sweep picking for example. 
Of course, here I can keep my thumb in place for most arpeggio shapes, but the light grip really helps with speeding them up. Okay, so far so good, but how do you actually practice this so that it becomes a real part of your technique and you don't have to think about it anymore? I recently made a 30-day legato online course for all of our members on Patreon. That one features some really cool exercises and also a daily play-along workout routine that you can include in your practice routine. But in addition to that, I also want to show you some fun and easy exercises with special focus on that kind of thumb placement and thumb movement. So a great and really effective way of starting out with this is just taking one of your favorite three note per string scales like G harmonic minor and really just playing it ascending and descending and focusing on moving your thumb along and I really like mixing a short burst of triplets in there to make it more challenging. Let's look at that a bit slower from the other side. As you can see, I'm just slightly moving my thumb around to support my fingers in the area behind my middle finger, as opposed to keeping it anchored like this. It also kind of works, but it looks pretty awkward, especially from this angle. And you end up with a completely different technique and finger angle for the higher strings compared to what you're doing on the lower strings. And for a more advanced exercise, once you're a bit sick of just playing the scale up and down, you can start working with really cool and more practical sounding scale phrases and patterns like this. And so on. So moving that kind of pattern through the entire scale. So when I'm playing very fast stuff like this, I'm very tempted to tighten my grip. Because of that, this one is actually one of the most important exercises in my routine at the moment. Moving these fast and quite intricate legato patterns through different three note per string scales is very, very important for me because I want to focus on staying more relaxed in general when I'm playing technically challenging stuff. Trust me, having good finger technique and legato technique will help you with pretty much anything you want to achieve on the instrument. So as always, I suggest getting started with this by downloading your practice files for today's video on Patreon. Don't forget to check out the full legato course I made for you over there in case you didn't finish it yet. And at the end, today's random German word is a really easy one. Finger. That of course means photosynthesis. Okay, no, it means finger. As always, make sure to comment that one below, leave a like in case you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Great news, my friends. I'm finally on Spotify to provide you with some awesome guitar music and shredding. You can already listen to my first full-length album, Elevation. And there's plenty more exciting music in the making for you right now. So make sure to follow me on Spotify today. The link is in the description or you can just search for my name.